Good morning, good evening, how you all doing? Um, first off, the, I fixed my mouse. Hopefully, hopefully you guys can see this. It's, it's a big mouse. Uh, number one complaint in my videos is you can't see what I'm pointing to. Fully understood, and it took me a bit because I had to do the Googling. And uh, hopefully you guys can see it now. If you can't, uh, let me know and I'll try again. Uh, this video is going to be about umbilical placement and where I think is the best way to do it. It's personal preference on my part, but um, what I've seen is the umbilical really has a lot of effect on the Y input shapers. Um, you're going to end up with Z movements or rotations around the uh, X axis, so that'd be RX rotation, but it shows up as a Z excitation in your Y input shapers. Number one cause, umbilicals. It's, it's always the umbilical. Generally, it's messing around with, with uh, zip ties and stuff. So what I'm going to show is a small video. I'm going to fast forward it because it's going to be into V2. Um, this problem only shows up in tridents and V2s. Uh, V0s, they also, you can see this in a V0. However, generally the fix on a V0 is a longer umbilical. Um, there has been reports that some of the umbilical wires have been too short and it's tugging on the tool head. So uh, switch wires do not have this problem because they're generally in a cable chain. If you've decided to take your switch wire out of the cable chain or the umbilical out of the cable chain, I recommend putting it back in. Switch wires aren't speed demons generally and uh, just leave it back in. If, if you, but if you are, I'm not sure how to help you in that because I haven't done that. So the VTs and V2s are generally going to have a few styles to do it. Um, this video we're going to watch in a second. I will be fast forward when we talk about V2s because I have pictures for those, or more pictures. So uh, let's get into this. You'll see three different styles, and then I'll fast forward and give you my conclusions. So this one um, goes into this little thing here, that little um, galvanic thing. It goes down and then you can see it keeps going and it just follows us down and you can take it either this way or you can take it this way. This is, and this one's good because it keeps everything in the chamber. So there's another one which you're looking at which takes it into the rear. This one's good because it makes the, the path real simple. They just follow each other for both the Bowden and the umbilical. However, this one, as you can see, well, you can't really see because there's no thing here, but it has, you take your wire behind it and then it goes in underneath that way. The third option, which we think we're discussing, is um, going over here where this goes. So you can run it on a trident um, this way. And I just have these little clippy things here to hold it in. And then another one down here. And you can take that down. Um, it can stay inside, as you can see, right? So there's a back on it. But you take that one down and you can go in there too with that. So all three are an option um, on the MIV. Um, the three main ones that I've done, I like, I think I like this one the best, take it to the back. Um, other than that, I think these two right here are pretty even. I wouldn't take it just straight to here though. Um, It'd be better to follow the Bowden path. You can do that, but a lot of people start getting wiggly um, umbilicals and stuff. Uh, it's easier just to go that way. But those those are all your options. All right. So as we saw, there were three options. Um, I'll, I'll go back to the middle. So we have this one here, and this one will it follows this, and as you see, it goes inside, right? So it's just a zip tie up here, zip tie here. Um, and then straight, straight down and into the um, into the electronics bay. The next one. Let's just fast forward a bit. Yeah, electronics bay. Just explain that. Now this one here, it's got a different filter back, and it just takes it and goes straight out. The reason I like this one the best because it's the easiest to mess with. Right. Let's say you don't like your setup or you need more wire or you whatever you want to mess with your umbilical this is the easiest because you can in the back which you which you didn't see but in the back you can put a service loop in 
because you make the wire longer than it needs to, you put the slack in the back. And so when you want to get to this, say you want to just pull a little bit more out because you think you got too tight, you don't have to worry about all the zip ties along the way that are underneath and everything like that. You've got a nice service loop behind the panel. You just pull a little bit more up and you're good to go. It's also the easiest to, if you screw up your wire, say, easiest to get to um, because of this, this the way it is. It's out, it's out of the chamber. It's out of the way. It doesn't have to look neat because it's behind. The third way, which is this one, this one is kind of that in-between compromise of where the wires come now. So say you got your setup there now and you've already brought it, you started doing it. This is if you're going from like the cable chains and you've, you did your PG7 connector kind of here. Well, this is this is the route I would go. If you don't want to remove that, you like the PG7 thing looking there, I would go this route. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I still prefer the second one. So let's let's look at these some um, pictures of Tridents. Now this isn't mine. This is King CB's, and I'm using this just to illustrate the style that most people probably start with their umbilical. And it's this, right? It's the PG-7 all the way in, and then like this. This is not a very good, this is the number one cause of umbilical problems I see in, in residents. And you can tell he's probably got either, I think he's got two wires there, maybe a, a, a beacon or cartographer wire along with the umbilical itself he's got something else wrapped around it um, there's probably maybe a piano wire in here this is no bueno no good because it's not secure right you've got an unsecu unsecured arch and it bounces back and forth like this so you can imagine when your tool head's coming out you still have this arch coming in and you're 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 accelerating all over the place right and, and trying to do your print but this arch is still vibrating back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's better to to take this and secure it up here. Um, so let's say you've already done this, right? You've already done this. And hopefully you got some extra wire maybe in the electronics cabinet or something like an electronics bay. What can you do? Uh, this is what I did. I cut the wire. So I had the same thing that that... Let's go back two pictures. Same thing, this was going on. This is what I did initially. I thought, oh, that looks cool. Maybe it'll work. Um, this is what I ended up doing. I took that connector off, extended out the umbilical, put a connector here, and attached it here. So really, this wire here is secured by one, two, three zip ties to the cable chain. And when I had this, it would go fully up and down because of this connection here. It would allow it to bend a little bit. And then I just secured it and I had one, two cable uh, zip ties here and one, two zip ties here. I said cable chains, but these are, we know they're zip ties. This worked. This gave me, and this was a way that I could kind of fix the Y, um, the humps, the Z humps in Y. Oh, you can't even see because I'm, yeah, you can see. Okay. Woo. Getting confused with this big, big, uh, big mouse. I'm looking at one picture. I should be looking at the other. Um, so it, it got rid of the, got rid of it, but it was ugly, right? I mean, look at this. This is ugly. So what did I do? I eventually had to, I took this thing apart and I kind of did my, you know, 5,000 hour maintenance on it. As you can see the beds off and all this stuff, but I went back to, I did this and this going, this is, I think it's heart K or whooping Picard. It's one of you two guys. Um, their, their thing back here. I originally had the PG-7 only. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to secure the umbilical. So I had to put the galvanic back in. And that's just there to secure, to hold up the umbilical. Because when I had the PG-7 alone, it would vibrate along that. Because it's not a, it's not a, a secure connection around here. It's, it's loose. And this thing is like a spring. So I needed something a little bit beefier. So the galvanics back in. But this is this is how I'm doing my V2 now. This It's just a little bit, got some panels on and stuff. You know, look a little cleaner. But, but once again, it's going behind. And if we go back to that video at the end here, 
so so you can see you can see how it is now right there's the galvet there's the whole thing there and it's the same same thing I picture I showed you and you can see there's my galvanic holding up the wire and this this is it so I got a little bit of a service loop back here uh, somewhere around here and uh, service loops down there so there's my service loop the wire comes here if for any reason I break a wire or whatever I'm generally you're generally going to be breaking wires probably around here right somewhere around this connector or the connector goes bad maybe I break a pin on that connector I have the it's not going to be that difficult for me to cut these here uh, cut this service loop and pull some more out versus if I'm going if I'm going this route right this is a maintenance nightmare right here you got to cut all these zip ties which is okay fine got to do zip ties but it's this bend here I'm pretty sure there's going to be a connector here or something like that but then you're going back up and so now you got to pull this wire through this entire cable chain and then back up through here it's it's a it's it's a nightmare it, it it's going to frustrate you so this this uh well, let's go back to those pictures this right here much easier as a maintenance point of view and as a serviceable point of view this is much easier to work with especially when you've got this big old loop back here yes it looks ugly in the back but you know what no one's going to see it right you got a opaque uh, uh, panel you're never going to see through that black you know so that's that's what I do and these these this is how I do my my v2 and then uh, back to the video I did all three of these just to test different ways but this one is my preferred. If I'm going to build another one, uh, another Trident, uh, this is how I do it. I would do it with with this guy, the V2s. So um, thank you. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully this has helped you figure out what what you want to do for your system. You know, there's there's many ways to run this thing, and whatever makes you happy is is okay. And I'm here to help you figure out if uh, where that where that Y hump's coming from or the Z hump. Anyway, uh, have a good one. Thank you, and bye-bye.